starting. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Wednesday, December 1st, the first day of December update for the North Tonawanda City Schools. So we have some announcement things, some housekeeping things to go over. Um, first thing is that um, it is concert season, and I have a, a message here from Mr. Janice, the middle school principal, reminding parents that the middle school concerts will be on December 7th. It is a 6.30 start for 7th grade and then a 7.30 start for 8th grade. We are asking that you limit the attendees to four per child so that uh, we can make sure everybody's safe. Remember when you're on school property, masks are required. Uh, more information about the concert at the middle school is it will be in the calendar, it will be online, and I'm sure they'll be sending it home through Schoology the uh, computers that they use. Next is um, that we will be doing an open interview where we'll help people fill out applications and answer all their questions for a number of positions here in North Tonawanda from teacher aid and bus attendants and substitute teachers both certified and uncertified um, aides and bus attendants and, and cleaners on Tuesday December 7th here at the administration building, which is at 176 Walk Road. And it'll be on December 7th from 9 to noon. Uh, no appointments are necessary. We're going to have a number of staff here, and we'll use our professional development room as well as the boardroom to spread everybody out. And if you're interested or looking for a job, uh, we'd be happy to see you on Tuesday, December 7th. And then um, you'll be getting information, or your students will, through Schoology at the high school. Um, we're going to have something for uh, extra help for all students, K-12, but the high school's first one up and ready. That's starting Monday, December 6th. Um, our overtime goals to help students that may be struggling with academics in their classes. Um, so we'll be providing after school help Monday through Thursday from 245 to 345 in the high school library. And there'll also be a virtual evening option, if that's easier for some people, from 6 to 7 o'clock. And you should be looking in your Schoology uh, folders to view the schedule, as well as links for the virtual session. So we're happy to get that up and running to help people catch up. And like I said, every uh, building will be doing a version of it. We just got the high school one up and going for this Monday the 6th. Uh, as always, I meet weekly with the Department of Health, and um, I'm sure you've been watching the news and know that Western New York area um, has a high percentage rate of positive cases of COVID, and um, while hospitals are filling up, um, the number of deaths have come down, but the number of positive cases and people who require treatment are up. And um, while we're not as high as Erie County, Niagara County is in that 10% range. And as no surprise, um, we were not in school Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for Thanksgiving. And um, our numbers, you know, were double digit for those four or five days that uh, needed to be reported. Um, but then yesterday uh, was down to two cases again. So like I said, we average about two to three positive cases and we have over 3,000 students here in the district, uh, plus staff, so we're looking at over 4,000 people. And uh, to have two or three a day uh, is definitely still manageable. And we constantly uh, are watching those trends and working with the Department of Health to see what we can do to keep everybody safe. So I'm gonna just kind of scroll down. If you remember, Facebook changed their format, so I have to scroll down to see the comments. So let me do that, see if we've got anybody. All right, so why does the middle school get to have a concert but not NTI? So um, NTI um, is doing a virtual concert, you're correct. Um, the NTI has sort of the cafetorium model there. Um, it's very tight, and um, in order to do it with so many students that were interested in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade there, um, it was just too large of a group to do it safely. 
So we're okay. going to try it virtually. We'll see if we can change that for the spring. But yes, I know for the winter it's uh, it's going to be virtual. I'm sorry about that. Um, keep looking for comments. So if you have anything else you want to comment on. Uh, we are into December. I you know, want to remind everybody that we do go through December 20. Third with students, so um, keep that in mind. Um, we have just really though uh, three weeks. Um, we kind of lose a weekend this calendar year with Christmas being on a Saturday. Um, so we only have the three weekends and three full school weeks uh, coming up before Christmas. So it'll go fast. Okay. Um, so we talked with the teachers, they're asking about the different venue and break up the grades. We talked with the teachers, um, typically the December uh, concert is um, a lower one anyways because the kids have just gotten into school in September and um, with them not having the full year last year of practice, um, it's usually a shorter one anyway. So I think we'll work on it for the spring and this Christmas we'll do our best to make sure everybody gets to share that video with them going forward. Um, there are, uh, all the schools could use the Fine Arts Center going forward, but it gets tight in scheduling and uh, rotating people in and out of there. So we'll work on that for the spring. Um, so there, a question asking what does the rate have to be before kids go remote just trying to keep up. Um, they're not saying that. They're really putting a focus on keeping schools open. So the only conversation that we've been having at the county is that if there were a breakout and you know a district had a number of staff members out and they couldn't um, teach the courses, they would close you know for that 14 day period but then reopen afterwards. So um, right now, even in Erie County is way higher than Niagara County, uh, they're not talking about closing schools and going remote. Uh, will, will they remote in what number cases? Uh, Sherry, I'm not following that, but uh, there's no plan really to go remote. Um, however, you know, just like last year, um, the governor can kind of come on and say, wait, you know, red alert, we have to, you know, reset and go backwards. And that's the only plan that would push us into remote. And there's no number of cases being talked about. Um, and like I said, we would follow suit behind Erie County, which is higher than us already, and they're still open. So I don't see remote as a coming, but the cases we do know in the winter go up and with just regular flu and uh, the holidays, people getting together. And so, you know, we always see kind of a bump that five to 10 days after a holiday. So we'll just have to wait and see. Well, so they're saying, can we have the teacher stop telling the kids they're going remote then? So what happened is um, Ohio school recently had to close for a water main break and that has kindergarten through three and some of those students hadn't been really doing remote that much the year before and when we said you know even though we're closed we'll still reach out remotely with students um, that day just to make sure they they don't get too far behind and i didn't know how long it would take to repair the water main break it can always lead into bigger trouble um, we found out that all the students maybe all the staff all the ipads weren't ready to go so I sent out an email to the staff saying, you know, closing school because of COVID is out of my control. It's going to be a governor's decision. And she can come on any day and say that. And I want to make sure that the teachers, the staff, the students, everybody's prepared if we do have to go remote. Um, we have the technology now. We have CSAW and Schoology. And I'm not saying that um, they have to teach remotely, you know, with those devices during the day, but they should be starting to use it with homework and submitting ass assignments occasionally, especially at the secondary level, so that if the governor did close us, we don't have a week or two of how do I do this? Everyone should know how to do it. So that's the only thing I think teachers are getting them ready for is that we don't know what's coming and we don't want to lose any instruction time if it happens in January or February or tomorrow, we don't know. 
um, and so they are trying to use the devices more often, making sure the kids are taking them home on a daily basis, um, charging them up and using them. So um, it's for their best interest as well as parents if that does happen, that we don't lose any time trying to retrain people how to submit papers and that. So that's why they're doing that. Uh, okay, thank you. So I don't think I missed any questions. Uh, oh, test to stay, someone wrote. Um, we have been talking about that. And I did see that um, the CDC and uh, New York State is using Grand Island as a test for that. Um, there's a lot of restrictions on it. But the problem is the tests. So they told us yesterday that um, we there's a shortage of the tests that are needed. So, and we're just, doing that now with employees that have to uh, test if they weren't vaccinated on a weekly basis. And we're constantly trying to make sure we have enough tests for that, times all the school districts across the state. And now if you do that with students for the test to stay when they're uh, close contact, um, they say you're gonna run out of tests. So you might be able to start it for a week and then you're gonna say we don't have the test to continue to do it. Uh, I feel that the comments are that the state put a lot of money into the vaccine and the boosters. And um, so the testing companies have kind of like, you know, slowed down. And so we're having trouble getting the test. So until the Department of Health in New York State would tell us that there are enough tests to do that, we would do it. The other piece of the uh, legislature and test to say is that it has to be um, equitable, which means you can't have uh, North Tonawanda to say we'll do it and Niagara Wheatfield isn't or Star Point or vice versa. Um, they would want us to go by county. So we would be working uh, constantly with the Department of Health to get the tests so that schools could do the test to say if we went that route. But it's a lot more complicated and there's a lot of devils in the detail. Uh, So yeah, if kids are, are just like anything else, if they're sick, they should be able to make up work for um, classes. I've not heard that there's a class that they can't make up work for. Some are different than others, like a phys ed class, they may have to make up uh, paperwork or they may want them to come to a, another class on their study hall. But all classes should be able to be made up for kids who are out sick. So last year, everyone who got an iPad got a charger, and we, when we collected them to kind of clean up the iPads and get them ready for this year, we told the buildings not to collect the chargers. So I have a feeling some of those chargers, that if they did get collected, are in the buildings. Um, they're on order as well, but um, like everything else, um, it's a long wait time to get them. Uh, we have had chargers ordered since September, and at our cabinet meeting last month, um, they still weren't in. But um, you know, short of that, we're kind of, we're starting to look at the dollar stores and things like that to pick up some extra ones in case we need them. Um, the good thing is most people have an iPhone of some sort, and if you have an Apple phone, those same chargers work on the iPad. So at night, they could maybe be be doing that at home. But we will try to get them as much as possible. So yeah, the chargers are a problem. We're trying to we're fi fix that up. Um, if we ever had to go full remote, we would make sure that there is a way to charge those iPads um, over to Happens. If she got sent home with an iPad one night, I'm, I was hoping that it would have been charged for her. Uh, they do tend to last a couple of days if you're not using them nonstop. So, but we are working on that. All right, so I will be back. Um, with more news on December 15th at two o'clock. And um, we'll see what's happening since that'll be about the 10, 12 days after Thanksgiving. We'll see if there's a big boost in COVID cases or not. But right now we had uh, two or three yesterday and we're hoping that that trend continues going forward for the rest of the week. 
So please share this um, or like it so that more people can see it. And we will be back next week on the 15th. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Stay safe and have a wonderful December. See you in about two weeks. Bye-bye.